saving and investing. What's the difference? Saving is where you put your money short term, anything less than five years. Investing is for long term growth, more than five years. This lesson will explain all the different types of investments that you hear people talking about, but very few really know what the heck they mean. At the end of this, you will know more about stocks, bonds, mutual funds, CDs, and savings accounts than the average adult. So watch closely. Investing will make you rich, so it'll be fun. Please welcome nationally syndicated radio host and New York Times best-selling author, Dave Ramsey. Investing, man, that puts me to sleep. It's boring. I don't understand it. It goes over my head. I'm going to nod off now. No, you're not. Because I tell you what, I told you earlier, and I've told you a thousand times, if you live like no one else, later you get to... There's no point in getting out of debt if you're not going to use the fact that you freed up all that income to go build wealth with. This is the other part. This is the build wealth part. Well, Dave, I'm just on baby step one. A thousand dollars looks huge to me. If I had a thousand bucks, my life would be rocking. And now you're going to come in here and talk about investing? I can't. I just can't relate. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Because I tell you what, you know, it's just like in water skiing. It's just like in a lot of sports. Did you know in a lot of sports that as you're moving in that, that you will go where you look? And I tell people, I mean, we, we've taught hundreds of people to water ski. We're big water skiers around our family. And we tell people all the time, you will go where you look. If you look down, you're going to go blah, 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 blah. <laughs> if you go over a water ski jump, you ever seen those guys jump in the water ski? I've done that. You go over, they tell you, look up. Look up. You look down, you go boom, boom, boom. It changes the attitude of your body because you go where you look. And so if you're over here on baby step one on a thousand bucks, I want you looking over here, looking at this bicycle climbing the mountain because that's where I want you to go. We need to move in this direction. If you've got your car paid for and all of your college is taken care of and you have some money saved for emergencies, this is the only time you would ever invest as a team. And then, if you are earning money and you want to do some long-term investing, good mutual funds are a way to go. Our teenagers, we paid for their college, they paid for their cars, so their finances were set through college. Given that, as they earned money, we were able to file a tax return and do Roth IRAs and good mutual funds. And that's really exciting when you start at 15, 16, 18 years old putting money in a Roth, how big that account can be by retirement. Now, this bicycle, well, it represents what I call the pinnacle point. I remember I growing up in Tennessee, we would go out riding on our bicycles. Now, in Tennessee, when you go out riding on your bicycles, it's just, you don't just go like this, <laughs> you know? It's either like this, or it's like this, or you're stopped. <laughs> These are your only options. It's up or it's down. And I'll never forget, a gazillion times as a kid, I'd come along a street, and the street would be going like this. And, and you know, little bitty guy, one gear. I didn't have all these gears. I had one gear. Did y'all ever have one gear? And you can't paddle. I mean, my little legs, would, I was a little guy. I could. So what you have to do is switch back, don't you? You back and forth and bang. And sometimes when you just go down while you're going back and forth, you can't, you know what I'm talking Try to get a little speed and go up a little bit. You know what I'm talking You did it too, didn't you? You know what I'm talking about? And you work and you work and you're like out of breath and you're sweating and you're over on the curb going, I'm never going to make it, I'm never going to make it. And you're back and you're forth and you climb and you climb and you climb until you reach that point right on top of the hill. When you're right at the apex, right at the top, right as it goes over, there's a moment there, isn't there, where you're just balanced. The work is behind you and the ride is before you. You know what I'm talking about? That's called the pinnacle point. That's what I call it. There's that same place in your money. You work and you climb and you sweat. You may have just one gear. And you, sometimes you got to pull over and rest. And you switch back. And your friends are calling at you because they went a little faster. You got friends behind you making fun of you because they don't think anybody can climb that hill. Nobody can get rich. The little man just can't get ahead. And you work and you work and you work and you work. And finally you reach that top point. Because you know the ride down is going to be fun. You can put your feet up on the handlebars, kick back. If, you, if I had hair, it would blow through it. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? You can cruise down, can't you, once you get to the top. But that, there's that moment right there, that instant in time when life changes. When the work is done and you go, whew, 
financially, that, is, that pinnacle point is when you have enough of a nest egg that your nest egg makes more money for you this year than you made for you this year. That's a cool place to get to. That's the pinnacle point. That's where I want to take you to with this lesson. Let's start with the basics. Keep it simple, stupid. Now, I'm not calling you stupid, but I'm just telling you. Keep it simple, silly. You can call it, fill it in however you want. It's the KISS principle. You probably heard that, haven't you? And when it comes to investing, you can do the same thing. The biggest mistake people make is some people are too smart for their own good. In an effort to be sophisticated, they do stupid things. The wealthy people that I know have very plain very simple processes that they use. All of these guys that have all this smoke and mirrors and all these other things going on, they don't make it. When I meet them 20 years later, they're broke. The smoke and mirrors took them down. Wealthy people that I know do very, it's painfully simple. It's ridiculous how simple their lives are. They do not overstep the bounds of what they understand. It does not mean that you're stupid if you make simple investments. On the contrary, it means you were wise enough to know what your limitations of your knowledge are. So you never, ever, ever put money in something because I said to. You never, ever, ever put money in something because anyone said to. You gather information from teachers like me, from people in the business. And as you gather that information, you put money in things you understand. If you don't understand it well enough to teach a bunch of seventh graders how it works, you are not ready to put money in it. You work too hard to trust a guy in a good suit with a slick speech. Do not put money in stuff until you understand how it works, period. And you know, sometimes these financial people, they, they don't mean to, and some of them do mean to because they got egos. I've been around the financial world my whole working life. And there's a couple of different things going on there, but some of it's ego and some of it's just stupidity. We get our own little set of words in every industry, don't we? We have our own vernacular. And you ever sat down and talked to a lawyer and you had no idea what they were saying? You ever had a doctor come in and say, try to tell you what was going on? He sounds like Charlie Brown's teacher. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. I had that happen one time. My wife was having headaches, and so we took her in for an MRI, and the doctor comes back out to tell us what's going on, and he comes in, and he's like, wah, 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 wah. And I raised my hand, and he said, yes, sir, you. <laughs> and I said, I have no idea what you just said. And he said, okay. And I said, well, let me try it again this way. Me havey the checky bookie. You want to get paid, you're going to tell us what you just said in English. You know, that guy grew a bedside manner right there in front of us and began to tell us they had no idea what was wrong with my wife's head. I could have told them that for a lot less than $8,000. <laughs> it's the only sharing joke. We don't do sharing jokes. We're smart. Okay, now, but seriously, I mean, don't sometimes financial people come in, they sound like Charlie Brown's teacher. Wah, 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 wah. Shut up. If you can't speak to me in a way that I can understand what's going on, I am not going to be able to do business with you. This is your phrase. You remember that phrase, and you repeat that phrase for the rest of your life to insurance people, to mutual fund brokers, to estate planners, to real estate people, to mortgage people. Anybody who starts talking to you in another language and you don't get it, don't play it off and act like, well, I'm too dumb, and I don't wanna, I'm going to sit here and act like I know what's going on, and I'm going to sign anyway. And then three, three years later, find out you are neck deep in a stupid mess. Do not put money in something until you can tell me or someone else how it works. You want financial people in your life, but you want ones with the heart of a teacher. And about 85% of the people in the financial industry do not have the heart of a teacher. They have the heart of a salesman. They're there to pitch stuff and pitch them out the door is what you need to do. You need to get the ones, that 15% that has the heart of a teacher. And they will teach you. You'll, you know how they know that? You, you, you know how you'll know they have the heart of a teacher? Because you learn when you're around them. Dave, if I want to start investing, what are the things I should start with and what should I look out for? Well, investing is like anything else with money. The, the first thing you want to do is you want to be able to sure, be sure you understand what it is you're putting money in. Don't put money in something because I said do it. Don't put money in something because some guy with a good suit said do it. 
okay? You've got to know what you're doing, regardless of your age, regardless of your sophistication. And so if it's, if you know, if you, as you learn more, you can do a little bit more sophisticated investing. Never invest purely for tax savings. I'm putting money in this because it's saving me on taxes. Usually this, whatever this is when you do that, if it's a pure tax deal, the item that you're investing in is stupid and a bad deal. And it's an economically bad deal, but the tax part works. And they're trying to suck you in with some tax incentives into something you don't need to be into. Invest in good things, and we're going to teach you in the college and retirement planning lesson how to shelter it appropriately and safely, but don't go out there with your primary motivation being to save on taxes. Let your primary motivation when it comes to investing be make money. Then try to find a way to shelter that as a part of that. But if your primary motivation is taxes, you will always get your tail kicked. You'll get in some stupid deals. Never invest using borrowed money. Dave, I borrowed 62000 on my home. It's a dumb idea. Never borrow money. Particularly never borrow money to invest. It increases the risk of the investment astronomically. And if you lose the money in the investment, now all you've got is a payment to remind you every month of your stupid decision to make that investment. I've made some bad investments, and if I lost the money, it's just gone. At least it's not gone, and then I get to pay payments. So no, never borrow into an investment. No investment is that sure. No investment thinks that's a great idea. Diversification. That's one of those wah, 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 wah words, isn't it? I have a well-diversified portfolio. What did he just say? Diversification is a real simple idea. It means to spread around. It means don't put all your money in one thing. You'll get your head taken off. Don't bet your family farm on one horse in one horse race. And you know, I got this sure thing. There are no sure things. Always spread your investing around. Never have it in one thing under any circumstances because when you spread it around, you have lowered risk. That's what happens.